The question that plagues the runner is this, why am I living like this? But after miles and miles of trials, the question eventually becomes, is this living? From the crucible of such inner turmoil come the various metals, soft or brittle, flawed or pure, precious or common, that determine the good runner, the great runner, or perhaps the former runner. For those who cannot deal with the consequences of their singular objective will simply fade away from it all and go on to less arduous pursuit. I ran not for crypto-religious reasons, but to win races, to cover ground fast. Not only to be better than my fellows, but better than myself. To be faster by a tenth of a second, by an inch, by two feet or two yards than I had been the week or year before. I sought to conquer the physical limitations placed upon me by a three-dimensional world. If I could conquer the weakness, the cowardice in myself, I would not worry about the rest. It would come. I ran to become a legend to strike fear in the heart of mediocre talent everywhere, to put records out of reach and make the stands gasp as I raced and laid it all on the line, busting a gut and showing them the ferocity of my ambition. Training was a rite of purification, from it came speed and strength. Racing was a rite of death, from it came knowledge. Such rites demand, if they are to be meaningful at all, a certain amount of time spent precisely on the red line, where you can lean over the manicured putting green at the edge of the precipice and see exactly nothing. Anything else that comes out of that process was byproduct. My daily toil was arduous, satisfying on the whole, but not the bounding, joyous nature romp described in the magazines. Other runners, real runners, understood it quite well. I knew what the mystic runners, the joggers, the runner poets, the Zen runners, and others of their ilk were talking about. But I also knew that their euphoric selves were generally nowhere to be seen on cold mornings when their lungs burned and the wind cut like knives. They primarily wanted to talk it, not do it. But very early on, I understood that a true runner ran even when they didn't feel like it, and raced when they were supposed to, without excuses and with nothing held back. I ran to win. The true competitive runner, simmering in their own existential juices, endured the melancholia the only way they knew how, gently together with those few others who also endured it, yet very much alone. I ran because it grounded me in basics. There was both life and death in it. It was unadulterated by media hype, trivial cares, and political meddling. Running to me was real. The way I did it made it the realest thing I knew. It was all joy and woe. It made me weary beyond comprehension, but it also made me free. <laughs>